Hello, my name is uh, Matt Donahue and I'm an associate professor of chemistry at the University of Southern Mississippi in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And this is my uh, video presentation of a poster that was presented at the 2024 Spring National Meeting of the American Chemical Society. The poster is titled N-Sulfonylaminium Ions as Reactive Intermediates for the Stereochemical Controlled Synthesis of Multi-Substituted Piperdines. So the origin of this research or the motivation is that uh, the six-membered ring piperidine shown here uh, is a privileged structure found in bioactive natural products and U.S. FDA-approved prescription drugs. Uh, this article in J. Medchem by Nargarsen about 10 years ago highlights um, the importance of nitrogen heterocycles in uh, prescription drugs. And so what uh, they found was that of 72 uh, prescription drugs that contain the six-membered ring uh, piperidine, um, the substitution patterns uh, basically have uh, 62 of the 72 have a nitrogen substitution, 42 of the 72 have a four-position substitution, and you can see that uh, of, of the types, uh, mono, di, there's a pretty prevalent amount of them. However, when you get into tri-substituted piperidines on up, that that number falls off uh, pretty precipitously, uh, presumably uh, due to the uh, stereochemical uh, control of introducing the substituents at the different positions on the ring. So you can imagine, uh, say at this two position, you know, you either have a substituent that's axial or equatorial on, on the ring, uh, but then when you introduce another substituent, uh, you need to control the relative, so 2, 3, or 3, 4, whatever, relative uh, position and the stereochemical relationship between them. Are they sin, anti, or, or cis and trans? And so as we see here, uh, here are two examples, uh, one from Pfizer, one from Janssen, about uh, prescription medications that do contain multi-substituted piperdines. So uh, the molecule from Pfizer has an N, 3, 4 tri-substituted piperidine, and from Janssen it's N3 uh, substituted. So you can see that you need to control uh, how you get those substituents on the ring, as well as controlling their absolute stereochemistry. Uh, so additionally, um, the piperidine ring is found in uh, natural products, so this octahydroindolizidine or this octahydroquinolizidine. Um, which is, is uh, embedded in natural products such as gifrotoxin or lisubine. And so we were inspired by uh, these molecules to think about ways of constructing piperidine rings from acyclic precursors and then cyclizing them uh, in a way to control the relative and absolute stereochemistry uh, primarily using conformational analysis. And so the idea came from uh, another project we were working on where we wanted to create really bulky sulfonamides and look at the rotation of the, the NS bond and then the S carbon bond uh, of the sulfonamide. So we had purchased this commercially available enantiopure r 2 phenylpiperidine so we have a, a phenyl ring at the two position and sulfonated that with, sulfonylated that with parabromo, benzene, sulfonyl chloride to end up with this material, which uh, we got a pretty good um, crystalline material out. We ended up getting a crystal structure from Mississippi State University Department of Chemistry and found that uh, as seen in the chem draw uh, to visualize a little bit easier that the sulfonyl group uh, ends up in, in a pseudo-axial disposition, which forces the two phenyl ring uh, down. Uh, so we think from you know, uh, sophomore organic chemistry that larger substituents want to be equatorial. However, the end substituent is now controlling um, how the chair sits, forcing this phenyl group axial. And so then uh, that sparked the idea of, well, maybe if, if this group can anchor the conformational analysis uh, when we condense um, an 
aldehyde or say a ketone onto that sulfonamid, it can control the E or Z um, geometrical isomers uh, of that bond and then perhaps we can then construct the C5 to C6 bond using an intermolecular intramolecular cyclization. So the hypothesis is that uh, in our retrosynthesis from the sulfonamide, uh, we would start with this uh, N-sulfonyl uh, homoallylic amine, condense that with an aldehyde, and that sets up this equilibrium between the E and Z uh, N-sulfonyl aluminium ions. And we presume that the E would be geometrically favored again to minimize steric interactions about the uh, imine bond. And so if that's the preferred um, configuration, cyclization of the pendant alkene would then form the ring, uh, generating a carbocation at C4 that could then be trapped by a conjugate base of whatever acid we're using in the condensation reaction. And then this would favorably form the 2,4 trans um, substituted piperidine ring. And so again, uh, the, the minor product would be the cis, which would uh, basically proceed through the more sterically encumbered uh, Z enolate, or uh, excuse me, Z configuration. And again, with trapping of the conjugate base in an equatorial fashion. So we set out uh, to investigate this, first using a, a very electron rich uh, pendant alkene embedded in uh, homoveratrilamine. And so in this case, we're starting with just the paratolumine uh, sulfonyl sulfonamide. And for our model aldehyde, we used 3-phenylpropanol. And we did an acid screen with um, Bronsted-Lowry acids and then um, transition metal um, acids with uh, the triflate ligand and the ultimate goal would be to render this in an asymmetric fashion to set uh, this benzylic uh, carbon. However, this, this uh, material or this research was all done in a racemic fashion at this point. So it ended up, um, the reaction worked fairly well in terms of the sulfonamide condensing uh, with the aldehyde and we're presuming then the iminium ion is trapped uh, via electrophilic aromatic substitution to form uh, the bond to generate these uh, tetrahydroisoquinolins. And so we set out to uh, examine uh, the steric encumbrance of the aldehyde as seen in this next substrate scope here. So linear, uh, cyclic, uh, heteroatom containing uh, aldehydes work fairly well. However, when we when we bulk up that alpha position of the aldehyde, uh, we essentially saw no yield uh, under these conditions. Additionally, um, our original hypothesis involving aromatic aldehydes uh, did not work under these conditions. Um, we're still not exactly sure why that is, but we found a workaround using a functional group equivalent of the acetal. So benzaldehyde dimethyl acetal uh, under now a Lewis acid screen with uh, 10 mole percent of the acid worked fairly well in uh, condensing to get that two aerial substituent onto the piperidine ring. We extended out um, the acetal screen using uh, different short or longer chain acetals. Uh, we're able to get away with having uh, an alkynyl acetal as seen in this substrate, uh, furan. However, when we have other heteroatoms in the chain, uh, those did not work as well as seen with uh, the Lewis acid screen here. So, um, extending out um, the, the, the method to get to what we really wanted to examine we looked at another way of generating the sulfonyl aluminium ion, in this case using uh, our, our standard substrate here, the n tosyl homoveratrilamine, <coughs> performing a Michael reaction to get the n sulfonyl vinyligous carbamate. And so we uh, propose that this functional group has a push pull where the ester is pulling electron density and the nitrogen lone pair is, is pulling it are pushing it into the, the enamine 
so you can imagine that treating with an acid such as formic acid will protonate this position generating the aminium ion which is then trapped through electrophilic aromatic substitution and that did work fairly well so we're, we're performing the, the same bond construction uh, in that sense so uh, to generalize the method uh, we ended up uh, switching over to N-tazyl homoallylic amine as shown here and doing the same Michael addition reaction to get the uh, N-tazyl vinyligous carbamates and so we end up with uh, uh, basically a, a two to one mixture of the E and Z uh, configurations about the alkene uh, it, we found that the, the Z basically um, sort of does a retro Michael to give uh, the starting material under uh, subsequent reaction conditions but through that process we learned that just treating uh, this the tazic acid will uh, isomerize that to the E and, and the E was taken forward with the conditions of formic acid uh, to affect an azaprins reaction in this case again presumably proceeding through uh, the sulfonyl aluminium ion uh, to form this bond here and then trapping with the formate anion and ending up with uh, a fairly decent ratio of the 2,4 uh, trans uh, substituted ring and so we're invoking the formation of the n sulfonyl aluminium ion intermediate as shown in this scheme here so uh, here's the, for, here's the formation of that after protonation. And again, we're presuming that the E configuration is preferred to minimize the steric interactions about uh, the n tazyl bond with uh, the aminium ion uh, chain here. And then uh, proceeding through this um, sort of half chair-like transition state where the pendant alkene then traps we generate a carbocation and it's it's uh, then trapped by the conjugate base in an equatorial fashion to end up with the 2,4 trans disubstitution pattern. We screen different uh, oxygen containing acids so uh, trifluoroacetic acid worked well, methane sulfonic acid, uh, triflic acid and then interestingly enough triflamid uh, ended up having the ester cyclized back onto the 4 position and we were able to prove that with uh, an x-ray crystal structure again from Mississippi State University uh, providing that data for us. So this is an interesting compound because now we have this uh, bicyclic uh, structure with um, the lactone present and we're currently looking at uh, continuing to map that on to say any natural products that take advantage of, of that uh, substitution pattern. So uh, furthermore we looked into uh, additional trapping of heteroatoms using now a, a Ritter uh, nitrile screen so essentially using the same substrate but then trapping with different uh, nitriles so acetonitrile works well um, cyclohexane nitrile so we can we can just basically change this group while forming an amide at the 4 position and then to generalize the method even further we looked at uh, intermolecular azaprins in which now we're just taking the sulfonamide condensing with the aldehyde and, and then trapping with, in this case down here, uh, acetonitrile was the, the trapping reason. So those worked in, in fairly good yields. And so overall we were able to prove our hypothesis that uh, the, the sulfonamide group can control the easy configurational isomer of the n-sulfonyl aluminum ion that's formed, thereby allowing the, the transfer of that stereochemical information to the four position which is then trapped in an equatorial fashion. So this work was supported by an NIH R15 grant, uh, the asymmetric synthesis of bioactive nitrogen heterocycles. So thank you for uh, watching my video presentation of the poster presented at the 2024 Spring ACS National Meeting.